Hello and welcome. The Tizard mission, officially the British Technical and Scientific Mission, was a British delegation that visited the United States during World War II, obtaining industrial resources to exploit the military potential of the research and development work they had done was imperative. Britain itself could not exploit their own research due to demands from war-related production. The mission received its popular name from the program's instigator, Henry Tizard. He was a British scientist and chairman of the Aeronautical Research Committee, which had propelled the development of radar. The mission travelled to the US in September 1940 during the Battle of Britain. They intended to convey a number of technical innovations to the United States to secure assistance in maintaining the war effort. The objective of the mission was to cooperate in science and technology with the United States, which was neutral and in many quarters unwilling to become involved in the war. The US had created resources for development and production. The information provided by the British delegation was subject to carefully vetted security procedures and contained some of the greatest scientific advances made during the war. The shared technology included radar and in particular the greatly improved cavity magnetron which the American historian James Baxter III later called the most valuable cargo ever brought to our shores. Also was the design for the proximity VT fuse, details of Frank Whittle's jet engine and the Frisch Perel's memorandum describing the feasibility of an atomic bomb. Though these may be considered the most significant, many other items were also transported, including designs for rockets, superchargers, gyroscopic gun sights, submarine detection devices, self-sealing fuel tanks and plastic explosive. Tizard decided that the most productive approach would be simply to give the information and use America's productive capacity. Neither Winston Churchill nor the radar pioneer Robert Watson Watt were initially in agreement with these tactics for the mission. America would be getting the fruits of secret research virtually for free. Tizard arranged for Archibald Hill, another scientific member of the committee, to go to Washington to explore the possibilities. Hill's report to Tizard was optimistic. After Churchill's approval for the project, the team began gathering all technical secrets which might have military use. The mission included the following people, Army Brigadier F. Wallace, Royal Navy Captain H. Faulkner, RAF Group Captain F. Pierce, Army Research Professor John Cookcroft, who was a nuclear physicist and Assistant Director of Scientific Research at the Ministry of Supply, also Edward Bowen and Arthur Edgar Woodward Nutt, an Air Ministry official. Edward Bowen was allowed to take Magnetron No. 12 with him. After spending the night under Bowen's hotel bed, the case was strapped to the roof of a taxi to the station. In a farcical moment, an over-eager railway porter whisked it from Bowen at Euston Station, but on arrival at Liverpool, it was given a full army escort. The team shipped out to Canada aboard the liner Duchess of Richmond, then arriving in Washington, America on the 12th of September 1940. When the American and British teams met, there was initially some cautious probing by each side to avoid giving away too much without getting anything back in exchange. For instance, the British disclosed the technical details of the chain home early warning radar stations. The British thought the Americans did not have anything like this, but found it was virtually identical to the US Navy's long wave CXAM radar. The Americans then described their microwave research done by Loomis and Carl Compton earlier in 1940. The British realised 
that Bell Telephone Laboratories and General Electric both could contribute a lot to receiver technology. The Americans had shown a Navy experimental shortwave 10 centimeter wavelength radar but had to admit that it had not enough transmitter power and they were at a dead end. Bowen and Cockroft then revealed the cavity magnetron with an amazing power output of about 10 kilowatts at 10 centimetres. This disclosure dispelled any tension left between the delegations and the meeting then went smoothly. The magnetron would enable the production of radar units small enough to be installed in night fighters, allow aircraft to locate surfaced U-boats and provide great navigational assistance to bombers. It is considered to be a significant factor in the Allied victory in the Second World War. Britain was interested in the Norden bomb site. President Roosevelt apologised and said that it was not available to Britain unless it could be shown that the Germans had something similar. Tizard was not unduly dismayed. The Bell Telephone Company was given the job of making magnetrons, producing over a million by the end of the war. The Tizard mission caused the foundation of the MIT Radiation Lab, which became one of the largest wartime projects, employing nearly 4,000 people at its peak. The Tizard delegation also visited Enrico Fermi at Columbia University and told Fermi of the Frisch Pearls concept for an atomic bomb. Fermi was highly skeptical mainly because his research was geared towards using nuclear power to produce steam, not atomic bombs. In Ottawa, the delegation also met a Canadian, George Lawrence, who had secretly built his own slow neutron experiment. Lawrence had anticipated Fermi's work by several months. When they returned to the UK in November 1940, the delegation reported that the slow neutron research conducted by French exiles in Cambridge, Columbia by Fermi and Canada by Lawrence were probably irrelevant to the war effort. But since nuclear boilers could have some post-war value, they arranged for some financial support for the Canadian fission experiments. George Lawrence later became involved in the secret exchanges of nuclear information between the British and the Americans. Tizard discussed the Whittle jet engine and the seriousness of the British efforts, but he knew of little detail. The Americans realised that the development of the Whittle engine was far ahead of the NACA project. General Hap Arnold, commander of the US Air Force, was told that the Whittle engine is a satisfactory development and that it is approaching production, although we yet do not know just how satisfactory it is. Arrangements should be made to produce the British engine in the United States by finding a suitable company. This company turned out to be General Electric and the US Whittle engine would emerge as the General Electric 1A and subsequent production General Electric J31. Although the Tizard mission was hailed as a success, especially in radar, it is possibly significant that on his return to London on the 8th of October 1940, Tizard found that his job no longer existed. Although the German bombing of the UK was largely over by the time that the new radar systems were in production, the technology such as aircraft radar and LORAN navigation greatly helped the Allied war effort in Europe and in the Pacific. According to James Baxter, official historian of the Office of Scientific Research and Development, he said, When the members of the Tizard mission brought one cavity magnetron to America in 1940, they carried the most valuable cargo ever brought to our shores. The main success of the mission had been the transfer of radar technology but the mission also opened up channels of communication for jet engine and atomic bomb development and is seen as one of the most key events in forging the wartime Anglo-American alliance. 
Thank you for watching.